Whoa, what are you doing here? Are you eavesdropping while I'm trying to log into my bank? Are you crazy? Well, luckily, I don't have to worry that much because my connection is secure, indicated by the S in HTTPS. Now, I've also got this padlock telling me my connection is secure, that there's a certificate, and that is valid. And all of that means is that a 4096-bit encryption method is protecting the line, securing the line between my device and the servers of Bank of America. And I'm going to be teaching you in this Godot tutorial how you can create these certificates for yourself within Godot and then use them on top of our network architecture to protect the usernames and passwords of our players when they try to log into the game. Let's get started. Whether you watched all previous tutorials or just dropped into the series for the very first time, it doesn't really matter. This tutorial is pretty much standalone and you can apply the lessons that I'm going to be teaching you to pretty much any project. For those of you that follow along, consider it an extension of the project. For those of you that just dropped in, consider what I'm gonna be doing a demonstration. So with that out of the way, I've alluded a number of times in the previous six episodes on the importance of security and your responsibility as a game developer to protect passwords and usernames of your players. So in this tutorial, we're gonna be protecting the connection between the clients and the gateway. We'll use different methods in future tutorials to protect the connection between the gateway and the authentication server and the authentication server and the game servers. The connection between the clients and the game servers is not going to be protected with encryption as that would increase the latency too much. We have used network token verification in the last episode, number six, to ensure that there's no unauthorized players logging into the clients. So. With that said, the first thing we need is an SSL certificate. So let's get that going. So to create our certificate, we're gonna start out with a new project. <laughs> and I hear you say, OMG, Seva, we already got four projects. We need a fifth one? Like, yeah, technically we don't need a fifth one, but the certificate generator is gonna be reusable indefinitely in the future for this project, but also for your future multiplayer projects. And having a separate project is gonna help you to just generate more certificates in the future without having to redo this code. So consider it a little bit of an application by itself to generate your certificates. So I've called this the X509 certificate generator and the X509 is not a funny name. That's actually sort of like the technical indicator of the, of the, the encryption method that's behind the SSL certificate. So that's how I call it like that. So we're gonna open this up and I've already programmed it and I'm just gonna show you how I've done it. It's not that complicated actually. Golub makes it really easy. So I've simply created a new normal node, just a normal note node. Note, 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 note. I've called it the X509 generator and I gave it a script. And on that script, this is everything you need to create your certificate. What we do is we first define two file names. So these are going to be the output, what is going to be produced. We're gonna get a certificate and we're gonna get a key. So we're gonna call the certificates X509 certificates and the key X509 key. The file types are SCRT for the certificate and key for the key. Kind of logic, isn't it? Then we also define two paths where we want to save these files to. And I'm simply going to be using the standard default username. If you want to put this as a real application into a separate folder, you could go to project, project settings, and under the config, you should, could set the use custom use directory to on. That way it's not going to go into the Godot user files, but in a separate user file. But yeah, that's just details really. So we're gonna be creating this as a little folder called certificate and we're gonna be appending those file names and key names to it. So that will be the location where we store this stuff. Now, when we generate a certificate, we need a couple of things. And I've actually uh, made sure that I have that open. When we generate a certificate, we need a crypto key and that's the key we're gonna be making. Then we also need to input a string of the issuer name. That's basically your server, or in case of websites, your domain name. Then it's O, my organization, and C is the country code letter based on ISO something something. Uh, pretty sure it's down here, ah, here, ISO uh, 3166. If you don't know your country code, you can Google that with your country name, and it will give you the country code that you have to use. Then we can also optionally put extra two extra variables in there. That's not before and not after. And that's going to give you a date range through which though that is, is valid. By default, it's 2014 January 1st uh, midnight up to 2034 January 1st midnight. Uh, but we probably want to be changing this, especially once you release your game and you want to have your certificates 
uh, certified or, or, or verificated by an independent body, then I believe they only accept a certificate that has a maximum duration of one year. So that's something to keep in mind. However, what is important to see here is that this issuer name that we have to give is one long string. It's not like separate um, uh, arguments that we have to pass them into. We pass them one long string. That's kind of important. So back to the project. This is basically that string that we have to input, and we're simply just going to be building that string up. So I've separated all of this. The CM, the, my server, is just going to call it Multiplayer Tutorial. Uh, my organization, I'm from the Game Development Center, subscribe. And the country code, well, I'm in the Netherlands, so I'll use NL. Now for the not before, not after, I've set that to uh, October the 23rd. It's like the 24th, I think, today. And we're going to make it valid up till the, the, the 22nd of October, and like uh, one minute before midnight. So with that set, these are sort of like the settings that you can just reset. And you know, you need a new certificate, just change these settings and you're good to go. You got a new project, just change the project name. You got a new date, just change the dates and you're gonna be good. So this is pretty much like your, uh, your options menu. You could export these variables as well if you find that's comfortable, I don't really care. So we're just gonna run under the ready function. We're gonna uh, create a new directory because maybe if this is the first time you make it, this certificate directory doesn't exist yet and then we have to make it. So we're gonna check if that directory exists and if it exists, well, then we don't have to do anything. If it doesn't, then we're gonna make it. Easy as that. Then we're gonna run our function create 509 certificate and if that is done, we print certificate created so we can check whether things actually happened. Then when we create the certificate, we're first going to be creating that long string that we see on the top there. So now that you know that that's what that does, I can now delete that. So I'm gonna call it the CNOC, I just appended all those letters. And that's gonna be the string CN plus CN, so plus multiplayer tutorial, plus comma uh, O is, and then that's gonna be Game Development Center with this O. And then the C is then going to be, of course, NL. And like that, we get one string that we then can put right there into our um, generate self-signed certificate. Then we're gonna need this, this crypto key. So for that, we need a crypto class. We're gonna create a new one for that. Then in the crypto class, we're gonna generate RSA and then the 4096, indicating the 4096 bits that we need. That is going to be stored as the crypto key. Then we are gonna be generating our certificate. We do that with that function. That is also a function that's part of the crypto class. So you do have to call that crypto class there. We input the crypto key, we input our issuer string, we input the not before and the not after, and just like that, we have a certificate created. This key is important and that certificate is important, so we're gonna be saving both of them to the paths that we have indicated on the top there. And just like that, we actually have a certificate. So I got that folder uh, in, in one of these, right here. So here you can see the, the path name, I'll zoom in a little, little bit, um, where this is gonna be stored. So this is the standard default if you don't use a, a unique directory. Um, if you do use a, direct, a unique directory, uh, instead of go.app user data, it would have set right after roaming, it would have set X509 certificate generator certificate. So you're just basically cutting that piece of go.app user data, you're cutting that out there if you use that little uh, tick box that I showed you in the project settings. Okay, but you can see it's empty right now. Now I'm just gonna play my project. And right here we can see in the output certificate created. And now I can close the project. And now if I open my folder, I suddenly have a certificate and a key. And here we go, we got a certificate. Now there's one important thing to note, and this is, uh, as you've probably noticed, a self-signed certificate. And it doesn't sound super secure, and you're right. So let's talk just 30 seconds about that, and then we'll get going how we can actually use these certificates into securing our connection. Hey, remember this page? When I hover over this certificate valid, we see that it's been issued by the Entrust Certification Authority. That means that a third party has signed off on this certificate and is not self-signed. What our browsers, when we're browsing the internet, do, you know, the Edge and Chromes that we use every day, whenever they communicate to a website, they're gonna receive the certificate of that website and they're gonna validate or verify that against international databases to see if it's verified and third-party signed. Now, that's why this pop-up appears here. And if that certificate is not valid, it's verified and comes back false, we're gonna get these kind of things, big red crosses telling us that it's invalid, uh, it's out of date, or it's self-signed. 
Now, of course, Godot is not going to throw us de these kinds of pop-ups, but Godot, by default, does verify the certificate that we provide against those international databases. So we need a third party, you would think, but at the same time, you know, going to a third party is going to cost you a couple of dollars. Not a lot, don't worry. I quickly Googled for you. $10, $25 is what you can expect per year. So it's not that expensive. However, if we can make sure that we don't have those costs during development and only have to start incurring those costs when we actually release a game, that will be better, right? So Godot provides a function that is called DTLS Verify. It's basically a parameter. And by default, it's on true. And we just, by setting that to false, we'll be able to use these self-signed certificates during our development. And only once we are actually releasing the game, we have to start worrying about going to a third party and paying those couple of bucks to actually have them signed off. So we have our certificate, self-signed. Now we want to do something with it. I'm here under my Godot project with the four separate sub-projects, the client, the game server, the gateway, and the authentication server. Under the client, we'll do that one first. I'm going to go to resources, I've created a new folder here, certificate, and I've added the certificate that came out of the generator. I've added that to here. Now this is super important. Get this right. Don't ever give that key file to the client because then the player has access to it and that key file is supposed to stay private. If the player gets that key file, you're basically nullifying any type of security you had hoped to increase using these techniques because they can simply sign the certificates themselves and just basically bypass whatever you just did. So don't give the key file to the client. Going back, now going to the gateway, add a new full certificate and here I've added both the certificate and the key. That means that the certificate file on both the client and the gateway are identical. They're the same. They're copies of each other and only the server is going to get that key file. With the files in our folders, I'm now going to switch to Godot. I'm going to start with the client side. So on the client side, I'm going to go to the singleton, the gateway singleton, and that of course connects to the gateway server. On the top here, I've loaded up our certificate file. Now take note, I'm using load, and you've probably learned that when you load something on top of the script, you have to use preload. Well, the certificate and the key file have their own separate load and save functions, so you should actually use load. It may even break using preload. I haven't tested that because, well, load is the way to go. With that certificate loaded up, we now have three new lines of code right here between when we start initiating the network and when we actually set that network to the network peer. These three lines from top to bottom are first going to enable the DTLS, so that's the encryption method that we are using with these certificates. We are gonna set the DTLS verify enabled to false. This is that moment that we tell Godot to please not verify our certificate against international databases because we know it's self-signed during the production process. I've noted here that set this to true when using signed certificates when you start releasing your game. Then under network, we set the DTLS certificate to that cert, which is of course the variable on the top here that we've defined or loaded our cert into. And just like that, now our client is gonna try and establish the connection with the gateway using this DTL DTLS uh, encryption. It's, it's as easy as that. But of course, we also have to initiate the uh, gateway side to make sure that that is actually receiving that connection and actually is gonna start making that handshake. So I'm gonna switch to the um, gateway and to the gateway singleton here. And on the top here, I'm initiating or loading my certificate and my key in exactly the same way that we just did on the player side. Then just like we have on the player, we got three new lines of code. The first one is again, set detail DTLS, yeah, it's a tongue twister, to true. Here we set the key and the cert. And as you can see on the server, we do not have to set that verify enabled to false because on the server side, that check, that verification, that's not being done. That's only being done on the client. And just like that, you, you got your, 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 your DTLS uh, encrypted connection. So I can rerun the, uh, gateway, the authentication server and the game server are actually already running. And now just like that, when I log in, you can see right here under the connection that although we've made all those changes, now we can still log in as normal. It takes a little bit longer, we have a little bit more lag, but that is only at the start of the game when the player logs in. 
So I got one important last thing to say. This DTLS enabled network multiplayer ENET connection will only work in Go 3.23. I was trying to program this earlier today in 3.22 and I just couldn't get it to work. Just bug just kept on popping up. I couldn't understand it until I upgraded and everything was, was all smooth and good. So make sure you got that latest version or join me in my frustration. That was it for today, guys. Hope you like it. If you did, smash that like button, hit subscribe. Don't forget that little bell icon to make sure that you don't miss out on the next tutorial in this multiplayer series. Now I've got a little bit of a news item, news from Game Development Center. I've been live streaming live on YouTube for a week now, and I'm not new to live streaming. I've put in more than a hundred live streams on the game development of Soul Whisper, my own project, um, on Twitch. But you know, instead of asking you to come to Twitch, I just picked up the whole show and brought it to YouTube. So you know, you can all join in on the fun. So you're gonna see a couple more notifications, probably when I go live and when the live streams are uploaded as a video to my channel. Um, they are rewatchable for 14 days in case you ever miss one. Um, I'll make sure, that's my responsibility I think, that the thumbnails are easily recognizable. So you can immediately see like, hey, this is a live stream, hey, this is a tutorial, this is what I'm interested in, and this is, well, I'll maybe watch it another time. Um, so that's what I'll be trying to do. I you know, definitely suggest you visit the live stream one day. They're super cool, super active. So many people are chatting, asking good questions. You know, you know me, I'm, I'm not gonna try and answer them to the best of my abilities, uh, but then live on camera, you know, not having that practice uh, that I can right now. This is take 37, th yeah, 38 already. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's what's going on. That's the news item and uh, hope to see you there one day. Until then, keep on gaming, keep on coding. See you later guys.